Hey guys, so we got this concrete floor we're pouring tomorrow here. It's uh, basically just a crawl space. When they deck that over, there will only be four or five feet of room under there. So we got to pour what we call like a crawl space slab or a mud slab in there tomorrow. They're putting two inches of styrofoam under it just because that's code. And then we'll pour the concrete right over it, give it a nice bow float finish. But they're still filling it in today. They're using an inch and a half crushed rock. And we'll get here in the morning. We'll shoot our grades, snap a chalk line. They're just getting it graded out right now. So they'll get this put in there, then they'll compact it, and then that'll be all ready for the blue board. The blue board's like right there, that four by eight sheet of blue board, they're gonna lay that down over the whole thing, and then we'll pour the concrete right over it. All right, so the second truck's here already. First one's all mixing up, getting ready to go. We're gonna use the conveyor on that first one so it, uh, it'll reach a little bit better, make it a little bit easier for us. We got 4,000 psi. We got fiber mesh. Uh, we got hot water in the concrete. It's about 140 degree hot water. We're using a little bit of accelerator in this today. The styrofoam is going to help the concrete dry a little bit better too. It won't cool off quite so fast. Right now it's about 28 degrees. It's supposed to get up to about 35 degrees today. So it should dry okay. The sun's supposed to come out. Or we're way down on the ocean today. I don't know if you can see out back there, but right down on the, the coast of Maine. Now a mud slab, for those of you guys who don't really know what that is or haven't heard that term, is basically just a slab in a crawl space like this that just helps hold moisture out, uh, helps keep the the small basement area a little bit drier than normal rather than just leaving it crushed rock. So all we really need to do here is get the concrete down, get it screeded, get it bow floated, somewhat smooth. And then when they build this house, you know, when they deck this over, there will only be about four feet, like I said, of room under here. And they'll put some utilities down here. They'll put the water down here. They'll run the plumbing underneath the first deck. That way they don't have to put the plumbing in the ground. We do a handful of these a year. You know, more and more people are moving towards just doing their houses like this on a slab versus putting the frost wall in. Uh, it's a little less digging, less backfilling. It's probably a little bit less on the excavation side as far as money goes. But this is what we're doing today. So the mud slab is the term we use. What, what do you guys use for... I mean, some of you other guys must do these too where you live if you live in... You know, states like Maine that get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. But we use mud slab. A lot of guys use crawl, crawl space, slab. And that's what we're going to be doing here today. Now we're using the conveyor truck. We didn't ask for it today. It just happened to show up. So with the angle that we had to get the truck in there to first start pouring, it just made it a lot easier using that conveyor truck for us for sure. Now the concrete was also pretty hot, especially on this first truck. And what I mean by hot is, you know, yes, they use hot water. Um, yes, we put some accelerator in it to help help it dry a little bit better today. But sometimes the concrete just seems to want to set up a lot quicker than, than we're used to or it normally should. And that's what this first truck felt like. They had about an hour and 20 minute drive to the job site. So it was pretty warm probably inside that drum if they had 140 degree water. And when we started dumping the concrete on the ground, you could just, you can feel it. You know, if you pour concrete every day like we do, you can feel it when it's hot versus when it's not hot, when it acts more normal. So we knew it was going to be setting up quick on us. That, we screeded that first bay with a, with a hand screed because it was about 16 feet across there. And our hand screed was 14 feet. And the board on that power screed is 12 feet. So it just made it easier screeding that first bay. We didn't have to pass the, the rod back and forth just by doing it by hand. 
Now I'm getting my grade shot in the middle at the height we need it at, which is basically the same height as the outside edge. That little white thing you see there to the left, that's a floor drain. We're gonna slope some of this floor to that. We got another floor drain over here to the right that you can't see right this minute. And now we're just gonna, we're using the MBW Screed Demon today. We've been using that pretty much all year long. That's a really good power screed if you're looking for a power screed. Um, it's really lightweight. It's probably about 30, 35 pounds. It's got a Honda motor. It starts right up. It's, it's worked really good for us this year. So I shot another wet pad and right there by where I'm, I am. And then we're screeding the concrete smooth in that area so we can use that as our grade to screed the rest of that floor. That concrete isn't really moving around all that great, not for what we want. You know, usually a, a mud slab like this, we can pour a good six, six and a half inch slump with water reducer. Um, so it, it'll flow really nice, be just real easy to pull around. It isn't, the, you know, the mud slab isn't really needed for strength or anything like that. It's just basically a slab for some storage down here. If somebody wants to get down here on a creeper and do some work on the utilities or the wiring, they can do that. Roll around on it pretty smooth, but we just needed to get it down and fairly flat. They just, a little bit of slope to those drains in those areas, but that was it. So we're on to the second truck, and when we got pouring that, this second truck, we noticed that his concrete wasn't anywhere near as hot as that first truck. It wasn't drying anywhere near as fast, even though it was the same mixture. Basically the same amount of, of uh, water, the slump we added with the water reducer. But when we dropped it on the ground like this, it, it, you know, it, it held its slump for a lot longer than that first truck. The first truck would just dry right up. You could feel it just by walking in it. And we decided to use the hand screed because we had about 15 or 16 feet of width right there. And like I said, the board on the power screed is only about 12. So it just made it a little easier screeding this, this last section by hand versus using the power screed. I mean, some guys, when they come to a job, they may spin their drum a little bit faster than another guy. That, that would uh, maybe lead to the load being a little bit hotter than another. Um, the first load out of the plant in the morning is usually a little bit warmer than the rest too because the the dry aggregates sit in the bins which are in the plant so those are warm those are 70 degrees versus the remaining trucks the aggregates a little bit cooler we're gonna get this part screeded out you can see that other floor drain right there to the right see right there even on that left edge there that Darren's screeding with that's part of that first truck that the mud just is pretty we call it kind of sticky it's pretty sticky just didn't want to flow too good but he got it down all right now Darren and Luke's gonna finish up that last little piece while I'm over there I'm washing starting to wash stuff up when the concrete's hot, it really sticks to the tools too good. If, if you don't get it washed right off quick, it uh, comes off pretty hard. We got a little bit too much mud in there, so we're going to just pull some out for the come along. Probably I'd take four or five come along fulls out of there. Luke's going to finish screeding that up with a five footer. Get it leveled out, get it bolt loaded. We took extra care bull floating today because we knew we weren't power trialing this so we wanted to make sure we got this really smooth with the bull float and having the bull float with the rounded edges really helps because the edges don't dig in and leave really deep lines leaves the it leaves the concrete pretty smooth just with the bull float as you can see right there so how do we get out of here i mean how does how's luke going to get out of there and, and smooth that out without leaving footprints he'll He's going to jump out because none of us were around there to help him with the ladder. 
and then he'll take a come along and he'll just kind of he'll kind of just vibrate that concrete a little bit with the edge of the come along get it as smooth as he can and then we got a special little hand float we can hook to a handle and then we can smooth that last piece right out I could hook as many handles to that as I needed to I just put a four footer on there because I could reach down there pretty good and that got that last piece just as smooth as the rest you haven't subscribed yet guys go ahead down there and hit subscribe now I come out with a couple videos a week all about concrete work different types of concrete work if you like these kind of videos please hit the like button so that's it we got it poured it took us about an hour to get this thing poured got a bull float finish on it that's going to be the finished surface so when they deck this over again there's only going to be about four feet of space under there they just put a frost wall in to build the house on and you know you could have done it on a slab they decide to do it on a frost wall it's just the way things are done around here in maine so we're finishing up that last little piece luke's going to straight edge that then he's going to bull float it take out his footprints and then we'll be done with this guy so again thanks for watching come on back we'll see you on the next one